So you're thinking about moving to the greater Indianapolis area and considering buying a new construction home. What questions do you have? Today I'm going to share five things to consider when you do go to buy a new construction home. And stick around to the end, I've got a monthly market update for you. Hi, I'm Bob with Top Choice Real Estate and the Living in Indiana team, bringing you the word on the street, talking Indiana real estate. Hey, let's get right to it. Number one, you might want to get in on phase one. Hey, with all the inflation going on these days, prices are going to increase. And one way to head them off, buy during phase one. Hey, the con to that now is that you may pick up a nail in your tire. There may be some trash blown around. There's certainly going to be some noise and some extra traffic for a while. Number two is the three most important things about real estate. It's location, location, and location. You don't want to be on a busy street. You don't even want your backyard backing up to a busy street. And you don't want to be on the main thoroughfare that everybody in the entire neighborhood drives in and out. You know, the one where the model home is? You don't want to be there. If you can, get back on a cul-de-sac or a court. Those have great resale value and people that live on them, hey, they like them. Another thing that's a great magnet for people is being close to parks and playgrounds. And not only are they great for resale, but hey, you might enjoy it. Now, when it comes to ponds, there's kind of two sides to it. Some people love being on them and some people, hey, they got kids and they're just not wanting that risk. So, hey, ponds are kind of plus or minus. The last thing I'll mention about location is corner lots. I had a client one time, we were getting ready to put his house on the market, and he says to me, I paid extra for the corner lot. And I kind of looked at him, and yeah, okay, you got a larger lot, and you don't have a neighbor real close on one side because there's a street there. But I got to thinking about it, and I'm going, okay, the cons are, you know, you have traffic from two streets, you got more headlights coming at you. Um, in some subdivisions, you have to have so much brick on the front of the house. Hey, if, if you have a corner lot, you may have to have that brick around the side of the house and you may not want to spend that money. And look carefully. Sometimes those backyards on corner lots get squeezed down and your neighbor's house is real close. And regardless, that side yard's not real functional. I mean, most of the time you can't put a fence on it and God forbid you're looking out the window trying to see where your kids are playing alongside the street. It doesn't work. So bottom line, my advice is don't pay extra for the corner lot. Number three, people want to know which options should they get? Which ones make the most sense? And I say, hey, kitchens and baths sell homes. It's always true. So if you want to spend some extra money, spend it on the kitchen. You'll probably get a lot of enjoyment out of it, and it'll be a great value proposition for the people when they come to buy your house. Also, have at least one bathtub. You may be shower people, but the next people may want a bathtub or two. Plus, you gotta look at what's popular at your price point. I mean, the number of bathrooms, what kind of flooring, do you need to have tile, uh, are covered patios important, and hey, whether you have a two or three car garage. Let's face it, at a certain price point, you need to have a three car garage. Number four is schools. You wanna have easy access to your kids' schools. You don't want to have to drive 25 minutes to pick them up from sports or a play or whatever. A couple months ago, I had a cup of coffee with some clients, uh, Doug and Elizabeth, and they're getting ready to downsize, and they made a special point to thank me for counseling them to buy close to where their kids go to school. Now, not only do you want to have easy access, but you want good schools. And that's true whether you have children or not. Good schools will help prop up property values, and you'll make money when you sell your house. Number five is the builder. You want to read reviews and you want to spend some time doing this. You want to know who the best builders are in Indianapolis area. Hey, construction contracts are egregious. They are totally one-sided. They're like 40 or 50 pages long, maybe 60 or 70, and they are one-sided. So you want to have trust in your builder. It's a people business and stuff is going to happen. I don't care you can have the best builder in town and stuff is gonna happen. So you want a builder you can trust. Okay, let's talk about something important. Builders have procedures for registering clients. And so you're gonna wanna plan when you go looking at new construction homes so that you can take advantage of incentives and so that you can put those procedures to work for your best interest. Hey, to learn how I can help make buying a new construction home a smooth and enjoyable experience for you and at no cost to you, watch this short video right now. You'll be glad you did. If you're undecided about whether you need to buy or sell first, hey, this is not my first rodeo. 
So I'll be glad to talk with you about the pros and cons of going one way or the other, and then you can be the judge for yourself about what works best for your own personal situation. By the way, we offer a free room by room analysis. There's no cost and there's no obligation. And I guarantee you, I can help make you money and I can help save you money. My staff and I have prepared a short video, highlights 13 key points that will help you sell your house for the most money. Plus I'll share secrets on how I sold my last five houses in a grand total of less than 30 days. Hey, maybe you heard Zillow just named Indianapolis the fourth hottest housing market in the entire United States. And good lots like good houses can sell fast. So if you wanna take a look at a lot or a house, give me a quick call or text. We'll get you registered with the builder, get you taken care of and the way you want to be taken care of. And yes, do that even on weekends. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. We're about to put the winter months behind us and enter the spring selling season. Currently, there are 427 homes in Hamilton County with four sale signs in the front yard. That's 12% fewer than a year ago, and that's causing prices to remain sticky. Basically, they're unchanged from a year ago with the median price being $420,000. But so right today, you can still find a house for sale for $230,000. Or hey, you can go to the other end of the spectrum and there's one on the market for over $8 million. Unlike Austin, San Francisco, and Boise, our market has slowed only slightly. A year ago, it took 10 days to sell a house, and now, oh my God, it takes 13 days. Price per square foot has increased just from $165 to $175, and that's basically due to the larger number of new construction homes being sold. Hey, not only is everything brand spanking new, but builders are offering 30-year fixed rate mortgages as low as 4.99%. You might wanna give me a call. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday we do a tour of new construction homes for sale. On Thursday we do a walkthrough of existing homes for sale in their surrounding neighborhoods. And on Saturday we give you a feel for what it's like to live in Indiana. So whether you're buying or selling, know that I work harder to make good things happen. Make it a great day now. Hey, if you found this video helpful, you'll love this next one. Watch it right now.